Praise God. Amen. Amen. Presence of God is in this place. Bring greetings this morning from <coughs> Pastor Ziggy and Mom Rose. They send the greetings to the church. Amen. They often don't take uh, leave, but the presence is here with us. Amen. For those that are visiting us for the first time, can I see your hands, please? So we have the family of God. Let's stand. Let's give the Lord a, a hand for our brother this morning, your family that is visiting with us. A very warm welcome. This is your father's house. And your father's house, you can go and, you know, you can go to the kitchen, you can go to the fridge, you can help yourself. You don't have to ask. Amen. So be blessed as you fellowship with us this morning. I'm Evangelist Krish Ramsami, and uh, I thank God that the pastor can allow me this time to share the word of the Lord. Amen. And we continue this week, the third week, on the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God. Acts 10, 38, our main scripture says, can we have it on the screen, please? Acts 10, 38, and our God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, and we went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen? That's our main scripture. For God was with him. So God has anointed us, and when he anoints us, he appoints us. Amen? And when he appoints us, he protects us. Amen? This is the God we serve. And so when I look at the scripture, 1038, uh, this week, uh, when I worked uh, at night shift on Wednesday night, uh, we finished uh, Thursday morning, one o'clock, coming home, and uh, I had an encounter with a ghost who came in front of me while I was driving. And I saw this woman, face is pale, full black, just come out of the bush and want to stop me. But I know that my God, and I know and I'm, I'm an anointed of God and I know what is the spirit of God is. And so I just jumped the next lane and I was gone home. And I didn't tell anyone, but I began to pray and speak in tongues because we got two types of Holy Ghost. One is the Holy Ghost and one is the ghost, which is the evil spirit. There's two types of ghost. We move with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But the other ghost is also there to cut you off from your assignment. But as we hear the word of God, the anointing of God come upon our lives, uh, we need that anointing. Acts 38 says, and he went about doing good. You see, he came for those that were oppressed uh, of the devil. He's present all the time, uh, but he cannot be present in our life because uh, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit uh, is the one who teaches us. 1 John 2.27 that's the second scripture pastor gave us. First John 2, and the anointing which you have received of him abide in you. You need not know that anyone or any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you all things, which is the truth, the word of God, and it is no lie. Even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Only you can make that anointing work for you. I can't make that anointing work for you. But as we hear, we see the scripture going by, I'll teach you uh, how you can follow this anointing, how you can receive that anointing. That anointing uh, abides in you. Uh, it's not for you. Jesus sent us down the Holy Spirit, uh, not for you. That anointing is not for you. Uh, it is for someone else. That's why we carry the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away of your shoulder and his yoke shall be off thy neck and thy yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen? Daisy prayed, the last prayer, she said, you know, burdens will be removed, yokes will be destroyed, but Jesus' yoke is lighter for us. Amen? The book of Matthew. So it will be destroyed because of the anointing. 
You see the yoke, they say, off your neck. In the olden days, they used to take the bull to drive the cart. They will put the, the timber across the two, the neck, and this thing will drive the cart and take it to where it wanted to go. So it was tied up. So that what, what it means is that some of you are tied up, you are bound, and only the anointing can destroy that yoke that you are bound in. So we need the anointing uh, to destroy yokes uh, and remove uh, burdens. As you receive the anointing, uh, it is now in you. That anointing uh, will teach you all things. Uh, this anointing will abide in you. The book of uh, 1 Samuel 16, 13 says uh, that when David was anointed by prophet Samuel, uh, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord uh, came upon him mightily. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. Verse number 1 Samuel 16, 13. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily and he went forward. So when the anointing is upon your life, you receive that anointing. The anointing takes you forward. It doesn't take you to back where you was. There's a transition there. There's a, there's, a, there's a movement taking place there. So when you are anointed, uh, your lifestyle changes. Your life changes. The Bible says old things are passed away. Uh, be old, God will do a new thing. All things become new. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 uh, You are not the same person. You are turned into another man. And so I thought this morning that my daughter, uh, Mrs. Modley, uh, she's no more Ram Sami, right? And I thought she's going to take my message this morning. And she brought the message about Elisha. That's what the message is about. The man of God, Elisha. Second Kings 2 and verse number 9 says that Elisha had to follow Elijah and follow that anointing through so many places uh, that you will be encouraged to see uh, what the man of God, Elijah, did. Uh, he did eight miracles, great miracles. Elijah and Elijah, Elisha had to follow him until he began to learn uh, certain things in ministry. It's not easy to come up here and preach the word of God. It's not easy to stand here and preach uh, the word of God. Uh, your lifestyle has to be in conjunction with the word of God. Amen. Uh, someone must see Christ in you, uh, the hope of glory. And so when David moved forward, I believe uh, when we receive the anointing, uh, we move forward. And Elijah, when he became old, uh, he, had, he had to transfer the mantle. And so uh, he asked the question uh, to Elisha, what can I do for you when I'm being taken up? What can I do for you? Elisha said to him, uh, let a double portion of your spirit uh, be upon me, not come upon me. Let it be upon me. That pastor also spoke that last week. I'm just giving you a revision. Amen. Let a double portion of your spirit uh, be upon, him, uh, upon me. Elisha received uh, everything Elijah carried uh, and it was doubled. Eight miracles. You go read the Bible. And Elisha, 16 miracles. Now, so you, for you, what you need is you need to follow somebody. Follow Jesus who is the anointed one. Christ means uh, the anointing and the anointed one. Who is anointed of God to learn ministry and experience. If I'm not following someone that has the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, and moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, and moving in the fruit of the Spirit, uh, then I'm learning nothing. Elisha had to follow Elijah, Gilgal, Jericho, he had to follow him there to learn certain stuff uh, concerning uh, how to move in ministry. So with this anointing to operate in you, uh, you need to follow after someone uh, who is anointed. When I was called 1986, I gave my heart to the Lord uh, and uh, I had to follow someone to learn. So came December, I think this was about September, came December, normally I should get drinks from my, 
declines. So I said, no, I don't want to drink. I want you to buy me a King James Thompson chain study Bible. That time, 1986, 1987, it was 415 then. I don't know how much now. And that Bible I took and I began to study. I began to join me God that had a gifts to flow in anointing, to chase the demons, to lay hands on the sick to recover, to prophesy, to speak the word of knowledge. And I began to join this men and move with them. And I said, I want that. And after a couple of years, I received it. Amen. God began to train me, began to teach me. And I've been into every division in the church, uh, men's fellowship leader, being a deacon, being an elder, being sitting with a man of God uh, in, the, in the church council, and being obedient to the call, uh, what God called me for. And then in 1993, I began to move out and uh, to see what God is calling me for. And what happened here was in 1993, there was a pastor was uh, frightened to open the church. He had a call upon his life. Uh, and we took this first, uh, step of faith, uh, myself, Jane, Judy, and Justin, and we said, Pastor, we're going to stand by you. Let's open the church. There's a people that are dying, uh, and uh, you got a call upon your life, uh, and don't worry, we will join you. Today, 28 years later, the church is now established, Jeroboam Tabernacle, 28 years. I sent him a message this morning. The church is still going on. Amen. We were able to lay the foundation and God began to establish the church 28 years ago. And the same man of God, five years after, he laid hands on me and he released me as an evangelist. 1999. Amen. And I know the call of God was upon my life uh, because uh, when I went, I was called to go to Uganda and to minister and uh, there was a pastor who was doing a crusade uh, and he wanted us to fund him to put up the tent and then I said to my wife no problem uh, uh, we was in business and we said uh, let's do it so she funded the, and they put up the tent uh, and uh, the weekend when I was coming back uh, uh, Jane phoned me and she said uh, do you know what color the, the tent was I said I don't know she said it's a blue and white tent there was a lady in a meeting when the pastor ordained me as the evangelist. She said, I can see you preaching in a blue and white tent. That was confirmation that God called me for nations. Amen. Blue and white tent. It was the first time I'm going to be speaking in a tent meeting. And God moved powerful. I've been right through South Africa. Been through Africa. You know, being hijacked but still pursued the word of God because of the anointing. What I'm saying is, you gotta join people that is anointed for you to be appointed. You got to join people that are anointed was downloading upon your life uh, for you to move forward. You need a friend in Jesus. You need a friend who can support you, who can uplift you, Pastor Enoch, that we can move forward knowing that God is in control of our lives. Amen. We need someone. And so for us to be anointed of God, I know experiences will take us to places. But it's not a high, it's not a good thing. I mean, Elijah said to Elisha, you ask for a hard thing. The anointing is not easy. It's sacrifice. It's dedication. It is studying. It is waiting upon God uh, that you'll be able to discern. When we come to preach in a church, uh, we don't preach of what I heard all week. I must minister the need of the people, what God is saying me to do. That's what we called for. We don't come to talk stories. We must speak the word that will bring encouragement to you uh, that when you leave this place, the house of God, you came to a certain place uh, it's an awesome place. You must be encouraged. You must be able to say, I know where God has touched me. Amen. I know God has done something to me. So my scripture reading is from 2 Kings chapter 4. And we're speaking about Elisha. And the anointed man of God who received that anointing from Elijah. 2 Kings chapter 4. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophets 
That's the 50 prophets that moved with Elijah. Elijah saying, my servant, my husband is dead. And the creditors has come to take my two sons. And uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I have nothing. And uh, what shall I do? Elisha said to her, you know, what have you? She said, I just got a jar of oil. I'm going to move very fast for time. The second woman, you go down to verse number eight. Verse number seven. Carry on, let's go to verse number nine. Let's move up. There was a Shunammite woman from Shunam where she was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread, which is food. And it was that as he passed by, he turned every time to eat bread or have meal at her house. And she said to her husband, Behold, I now perceive that this is the only man of God which passes by continually. Let's go next scripture. Let us make him a chamber. I pray on the wall and let us set him there a bed, a table, a stool or a, or a, or, or a chair, and a candlestick, and it shall be done. And, and, it, and it shall be turned in. Every time he comes this way, this place will be for him. So I took these two women. The first woman had no husband. He died. The second one had a husband. The first one had two sons. The second had one and uh, no children. The first one was in debt. They were owing her creditors. Uh, the second one was rich. Uh, she was an in influential uh, woman. The first one had no food. There was lack. There was poverty. The second one had everything and food to give. The first one, uh, the Bible doesn't describe where she came from, which town she came from, what tribe she came from. But the second one, it says uh, that she came from a town, uh, Shunem. She was a Shunammite woman. So the two of them have been described. So I took the second one and I studied there. Shunam means a, a double resting place or a quiet place. So I went on to study further where the Shunam came from. It comes from a word uh, Shulam meaning ladder. Jacob's ladder or is a step. So this is a step, right? And if I take a ladder, I am keep on climbing up the ladder. It's a step. Is this an uneven place? It's an uneven place. It's a step. So, double resting place, quiet place. The other one was poor. And the Bible says uh, that when Elisha saw her, she had nothing, she only had a jar of oil. And so the Bible says that Elisha said to her, go borrow vessels from your neighbors, which means uh, it was like Chatsworth or like Alex, where you open the door, your neighbor is there. Right? The other woman, Shunam means a quiet place, a double story house, right? It says a double resting place, uh, a step ladder, in other words, she's climbing up the ladder. She's moving to somewhere. And so like today, like I'm staying in Alex, the rats are running around. You open the door, your neighbor is in your face. Or like Chatsworth. And then they ask your auntie, you got some sugar for me. You know, uncle wants some black tea. Don't worry about the milk. That's your neighbor. The other one is staying like in Santon or like uh, Greenstone. And you are in a country estate uh, and it's quiet. There's no dogs barking. You are in a boomed off area. You don't ex I expect visitors unless they phone you. Am I right, Gordon? Right? It's quiet. So there's it here. South Africa, there's it here in the Bible. Right? And then I forgot to tell you that uh, in, in Isaiah 10, 27, they say that the your, the yoke shall be destroyed, your burden shall be removed. Uh, and I went and studied that word and said uh, that uh, these people, the Israelites, uh, were captured, not state capture, captured uh, by the Syrian. And that's why they were burdened, they were, they were, were put down, uh, and they had no breakthrough. And the prophet Isaiah had to come uh, and prophesy life. So I studied the word Assyria. 
It means a, a step. Asriya means a step. And so I take it that uh, a step means uh, also uh, uneven places. Michelle, uneven places. You're uneven. You're not standing evenly, right? You're uneven. That's a step. Uneven places. Those people, they were attacked by the Assyrians. Uh, they were at an uneven place. They were being attacked. They don't know what to do. Uh, and they had to come to anointed men of God uh, to give them direction. Amen. Are you enjoying the story? So, Asteria means a step. Uneven place. An uneven place. The first woman, what happened to her was, she was at an uneven place. Lots of problems. No money. They came to take her two sons. I don't know what age they were, don't say. And uh, the creditors, you know, when you go into liquidation, they want to take everything. So here's a man of God, and she cried out to him. She said, uh, my husband was part of your ministry. He was in the same uh, 50 prophets. He was one of them, uh, and he died. Now, I believe when I read the scripture that uh, they say that the creditors came to take the sons away so they can be slaves. They, they want the payment, which means uh, this man had a business. That's what I think. He had a business, uh, and he was at an uneven place. Uh, he was bound. Uh, so this husband was a businessman. Maybe he was a successful businessman, but to me, uh, it says that he owed people money, which means uh, he was in debt. Why? Because uh, there was nothing in his house. Maybe he had fancy cars. Maybe he was doing well, the business was bigger, but he had nothing to show for. And so when he died, uh, the family was left with a burden. Uneven place. They were at an uneven place. Uneven, you can't walk properly. Hello? You can't walk properly. But the Bible says that uh, that this man who died, he feared the Lord. So sometimes in business, uh, you have to be wise. Businessmen, you have to be thrifty. You have to save for the future. I don't say don't have good house, good cars, good clothing, go to DH, buy a good suit. We don't say you can have that. But think about the future, think about your children, think about what's going to come. Don't eat everything now and die but rather save for the future also. I know my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But when we're in Christ, uh, he knows our future. Amen? But we need to use wisdom uh, when we do business. Here was a family here, uh, the husband died. No insurance, baby. No insurance money to collect. I don't think so they had a funeral policy. You know the Indian culture? We all must put money. Let's do a nice funeral for auntie. Let's buy the 20,000 casket. If I have to borrow now, I must borrow and give it, you know, 1,000 rand each family. Let us use wisdom. Let me take a funeral policy that I don't burden anyone when I die. Hello, is someone hearing me today? There's a problem here, uneven place. This woman was at an uneven place, but she put her trust in the man of God. Uneven place. He said, give me the jar. Brought the jar, little oil. Judy spoke about little, everything little. Little this, little that, little that, little that. Take that little, put it in the man of God's hand. She put that oil into the man of God's hand. Now he said, go next door and borrow. Don't borrow a few, borrow big time. Go home and read the scripture. Not today, tomorrow when you're relaxing. Right? Don't take a few. Take extra from them. Go into your house now with your two sons uh, and shut the door. Sometimes we're in business, we got big mouth. We let everyone know what deal we're doing. And now that man come and steal your business. Shut the door to the enemy. He said, go into your room 
close the door, shut it. You know, when God shut the door, it shut. No man can open. Amen? But God can open the door, no man can shut. Amen? And so shut the door, start filling the oil. I think it's verse number 7, guys. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 7. Let's go. So she listened to the men of God. They went in and they began to pour the oil. And let's see what happens. The Bible says they were obedient. 2 Kings chapter 4. They had to listen to the men of God to follow instruction. They were obedient to the call of God and they obeyed. Verse 7 says, uh, the man of God said to them, go sell the oil. Right? Go sell the oil. Don't give the oil. Go sell the oil. Pay off the debt. Now live on the rest which was more than enough. Okay, we got computer problem. But anyway, verse number 7. They obeyed. He said, go sell the oil. In other words, uh, the business was restored. Gordon, the business was restored. Go sell the oil. When you sell the oil, you're going to make a profit. Pay off your debt. Now live on the rest. The rest, the meaning of rest was uh, being fattened. The anointing in uh, Isaiah 10, 27, it says, the anointing there means fattened. That there was too much, there was an overflow. I'm reminded of Psalms 23 and verse number 5 and 6 there. Uh, prepares at a table in the presence of an enemy is uh, you anointed my head with oil uh, my cup run it over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me uh, all the days of my life hello my cup run it over this is what happened to this family they put that little oil into the man of God's hand because they were at an uneven place they couldn't stand steady and see what happened when they did that. Uh, they put it into the man of God's hand. The man of God was a prophet. Uh, he was not able to prophesy, but he prophesied. He flew in the word of knowledge because uh, he knew what he can do for God because uh, he received that anointing from Elijah. He knew he stand with God. Amen. Uh, and so when they put that into his hand, uh, there was a continuous overflow. Rest. They came to a place of rest. Now the second lady says is double rest. The first lady has only one rest. But the second lady, the Shunaman, means double resting place. So the first woman, she had something. And God was there for her. The business got restored. She paid off her debt. And she was able to be sustained for the rest of her life. Amen. Are you excited? That God can take you out of an unsteady place. Unse you know, you're going through some stuff now. You're at an uncertain place. Coronas came. You know, the church is at an uncertain place. I can tell you that now here also. That uh, Corona came. Some people have left the church. It's good. Maybe some have to go. I'm not, I'm not saying this in a bad context. Don't take me out of context. It is good that they left the church because God is opening now doors for the new people to come. Because the place, the church is at a place, at an uneven place, a step. Don't know what to do. But God is raising up someone new people to come in uh, we have to open the door for them because maybe the old uh, don't want to change hello the old don't want to change we must release them let them go go in peace my brother my sister the church is too big amen the church is too big we shouldn't get worried we must pray for them that god will bless them god will take care of them let them go in peace uh, Uneven places. Genesis 28, 17 says uh, that year was, I'm speaking about Jacob's ladder. 
Jacob was a, at an uneven place when he put his head on the rock. When it came to verse 17, he says, uh, Surely God was in this place. Uh, I didn't know. Uh, it's an awesome place. Uh, this is the house of God. You know, beloved, when you come into the house of God and you'll be obedient to what God wants you to do, you are blessed. Because you come to a place that is steady. The second woman. I got 15 minutes. Second woman. She was a rich woman. She had a husband. She was successful in business. She didn't have children. The Bible says, as you go read it down, going right up to verse 20, says uh, that uh, the husband was old uh, and she couldn't have a child. That's what Gehazi said to Elisha. Couldn't have a child. So this woman built him a chamber. A chamber is the first floor. And then uh, the chamber is the second floor. I said double resting place. Sunnah means double resting place. Let us build him a chamber. In other words, uh, let us build him an extension, uh, a second room uh, for the man of God, uh, that when he comes by, uh, that uh, he will be comfortable. You know, when I go to African countries, uh, uh, sometimes the man of God, they can't afford to put me up in the hotel. So I go stay in the locations. I stay with them. And uh, it's an uneven place. It's not good to use a pit toilet. You've got to look behind. I don't know if you experienced it. I'm from the berries. We had that bucket system. And it's an uneven place. But I stayed. Amen. Yeah, the woman made a second story for the man of God, knowing that every time he comes by, uh, hey, there's a place for him to stay. And see what she did there. Uh, four things I'm going to talk about today. First thing she said when we made this uh, building for him, this room, she said, uh, let us set for him a bed, a table, a stool, uh, and a candlestick. Number one, the bed. We all know a bed uh, is for resting. We've gone back to resting place again. The bed is for resting. Sometimes we, in our lives, uh, we need to take a break and relax in our bed. Take it easy. Jesus said to the man, take up your bed and walk. 38 years he'd been lying by the gate, waiting for the stirring of the waters. Take up your bed. In other words, uh, take some rest now. You've been resting too long, 38 years. Uh, take up your bed, rise up and walk. Uh, yeah, the bed was uh, that uh, we need some rest uh, at some time. We need to lie down. Be quiet. Uh, amen. Uh, Shuna means uh, double rest, a uh, quiet place. Uh, take some time, be quiet uh, and wait upon God. That's what the bed was there for. Number two, he says, uh, they put a table. A table is where your family come together and you have fellowship. You talk around the table, Dion. You nurture your children, Judy. You give them some stuff and let's begin to take the bread. This says uh, that this lady gave him food every time he came. So around the table, uh, we have fellowship. We have conversation. And we begin uh, to spend some time bonding, uh, building a uh, relationship. That's a table. We had an uneven place, uh, but when we come to the table, we come to an even place. We came from a certain place uh, into an awesome place. Maybe sometime uh, our children can teach us some stuff that we don't know. But when we come to the table, we have fellowship. Uh, we come to bake break, break bread uh, around the table said, let us uh, communion together. Let us come together. Jesus took the 12 disciples uh, and he brought them together. But he said, one going to betray me. So the table also, when you come around the table, it's not a good place also. Jordan, you're going to get some stuff around the table. Because uh, the principal must be phoned and said, Jordan did something wrong. So now you come around the table and Dion will start dishing him out some briyani now to sort him out. The table is a place where you have a relationship. You discuss things. Amen. You have fellowship. Uh, Psalms 23 again. Uh, Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy. The table is a place where God begins to prepare you because the enemy is after you. The enemy could have taken me out Thursday morning, one o'clock. That lady I looked at her, she looked at me in the eyes and I saw she was a ghost. And I know she was a ghost. Hey, one o'clock morning, lockdown now, 12 o'clock curfew, there's no one on the road. Next morning I'm going to work, I said, let me look at that place. You know what I saw? I saw they've been chopping all the trees down. Now I think these guys that were chopping the trees, they, they disturbed the devil. She was disturbed, she was frustrated. They took her, they cut the tree down, which means that this devil, you know in the early days my grandfather used to tell us stories that in the barracks, he was a main Dumasada, that's what his name was. He should man the main gate. And he should say the devil, they should be in a tree and they're playing the tabla, they're singing only after midnight. This is real, guys. Oppressed of the devil, Acts 1038 says, and Jesus came for it. Somewhere oppressed of the devil. You had an uneven place. That devil could have taken me out. I could have stopped to give it a lift if I didn't have wisdom. If I wasn't anointed and pointed, I should have stopped and said, let me give it a lift. That was my last day. Hello? Not making you scared. First time I had experience with the devil. Not, not I mean, I chased demons. I saw guys getting slapped by devils you know, for closing their eyes. But this devil, I saw in the face. But I began to pray and speak in tongues. So, uneven place, I prepared the table. Now the stool is a chair. The Bible says that uh, Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father and is making intercession for us. He's sitting down and he's calling us. We have fellowship with him. He said, a stool is a place where you sit down uh, and you listen. You're listening to me. You're sitting down. You're taking a break. Uh, sit and talk. Relax yourself. Read the word. Psalm 110 verse 1 says, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. Amen. The enemy is coming after you. He wants to trouble you. He wants to cut you off. But here the word says that she made a stool for him where he can sit down, he can relax, he can study. So take time, guys, to study. Sit down, take a break. The last one is a lampstand. She had to put a light for him in the room. Let your light so shine before men that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so, light so shine before men eh, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He's calling us to do good works. Eh. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. Eh. And so when I look at the anointing eh, that came upon eh, this lady, what happened to her? This lady, I mean, the, the prophet spoke into her and said, this time next year, you will have a son, you'll have a child. She said, ah, you're going to tell me lies. That's prophet lie. This one is prophesy. This man said to her, next time this season, next year, you will have a child. Came the time she got a son in the old age. And then after a while, I mean, he's passing by all the time. Uh, I don't know which country he's coming from, where he's going to. Uh, and uh, the child gets sick and dies. And uh, cut a long story short, and uh, she sent a message uh, with a servant, go look for the man of God, uh, take a donkey, ride up, let me go with you, look for him, but don't tell him nothing. And then uh, when the man of God saw the, the servant, uh, he saw the lady and said, uh, you know, is everything well with your husband, with your child? She used three words, she said, it is well. She was at an uneven place. She was at an uneven place, why? The child was dead, she left him in the chamber and uh, the man of God says that uh, God didn't tell him that the son was dead. But he discerned in his spirit uh, and uh, the servant said, uh, you know, why don't we let her go? Let her go back 
But the man of God said, no, let us go back. When they came back to the house and he went to the upper room, he saw, he saw that the child was dead. Flat on his face, first time he laid himself, uh, nothing happened. Second time he laid himself on the child again, uh, and the child became warm. In other words, it was yesterday like uh, how winter was, the snow. So the child was cold. And when he slept the second time, uh, the child uh, burped seven times. Came alive. But she said, uh, though she was going through some stuff, Mervyn, uneven place, the son was dead. Maybe you had an uneven place, uh, but she said, because she knew God, uh, she said, it is well. Is it well with you this morning? Let's close our eyes. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your wonderful name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are ministering to someone today. Uneven places. You might be at an uneven place this morning. And you don't know what to do. Jesus is the answer. You had an uneven place. This woman lost a child, but the child came alive when the anointed one of God, Elisha, laid on the sun. He came alive. God can resurrect your story today. You had an uneven place. You need a double rest. Put it into the hand of God. Put it into the man of God. And as he would counsel you, the man of God is here to counsel you to educate you, to give you direction, to pray with you when you're going through some stuff. You're at an uneven place, beloved. You may be sick, you're at an uneven place. You may be haven't got a job, you're at an uneven place. You may be lacking in some area of finance, you're at an uneven place. You haven't got business coming in, you're at an uneven place. Put it into the hand of God this morning. And know that God, by his anointing, uh, is able to resurrect you. Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the life. Uh, he that believes in me, in me though he, he were dead, uh, yet shall he live. The son began to live uh, because the man of God began to discern uh, there was something wrong with the child. As men of God, we got to discern uh, the need of the church. This morning, whatever your need is, uh, no looking around uh, it's very embarrassing when you look at someone and they stand up for prayer and you look at them, they are discouraged. No looking around. We are standing on holy ground. I want to pray for you this morning. Whatever your need is, you just stand this morning. No looking around. We are serious about God. God can turn your situation around. He can turn it around. You can stand this morning, whatever your need. You don't have to tell me, you don't have to speak to anyone, uh, but you speak to God this morning. Uh. If you did it for the two women, uh, the woman who had a little jar of oil, uh, there was an overflow. Uh, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me uh, all the days of my life. But I must be found uh, in the house of God. Yeah, the son was dead, uh, and when the man of God came uh, and he prayed, uh, the son came alive. There was a need. Uh, you had an uneven place this morning. Uh. Is there anyone else going to stand and say, Lord, uh, I'm believing you for a miracle. I'm trusting you for a promotion. Uh. I'm believing you for a breakthrough in my finance. Uh. You stand this morning. I want to pray for you. I karabasi enderebe. I korobosi enderebe. We bless your wonderful name, Father. We come to you, Jesus, uh, this morning, knowing, God, uh, that with you all things are possible. I thank you, my God, that no weapon fashioned against us uh, shall be able to prosper. And Father, right now, uh, I speak to the root of everyone's problem. <coughs> I cut you off. You do not produce. I cancel you from the root uh, in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is right now, eh, the anointing eh, can give you a breakthrough. Eh. And Father, right now, let your anointing eh, destroy yokes eh, and remove burdens. Eh. 
I release the anointing uh, for a breakthrough upon your children right now. Whatever it is, uh, they would say, Lord, I'm trusting you now. I've heard your word. I saw what the man of God did uh, for the children in the church. Uh, and now I'm receiving it. Uh, receive that anointing uh, to have a release this morning uh, in Jesus' name. He karabasi in the rebe. Korobosi in the Father, right now, I seal your blessing. I seal your blessing. Let there be revival. Let there be restoration. Right now in the name of Jesus let them move to a double resting place let them move up the ladder let them begin to see angels taking the problems up to God and God releasing anointing for a breakthrough seal this blessing upon your children right now let them go through this week knowing God eh, that you go before them eh, you prepare the way for them eh, you will open a supernatural door in the name of Jesus. Bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.